I love that you guys try to guess what I'm going to be wearing and how I'm going to look today. So let me see here. Patrick Derling did very well, but then Kate Price is right at him and added the black shirt. <laughs> Not very nice, Kate. Very nicely done. But you too, Patrick, you laid the groundwork. So it's so nice to see everybody. Thank you for joining me for a Monday live stream. Uh, it's going to get a little bit busier as the week continues. Um, uh, no thumb holes, I'm afraid. Uh, it's going to get a little bit busier, I believe, starting tomorrow. Um, and then, uh, you know, no big movies this week. Uh, Renfield, I'm seeing Renfield this evening. Uh, I'm going to review it in the next day or so. I might not even review it till Thursday, though, depending how crazy things get in the next couple of days. Let's see. Let's see. But we got a nice stream today. I'm also still reeling from um, the Succession episode last night, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it. I put it last because it's a spoiler discussion, so if you haven't had a chance to watch Succession, uh, I don't want to have a situation... Uh, where you get it spoiled for you. Although if you're really far behind, good luck everybody. Uh, Bo is afraid. I'm going to review that next week. Uh, I am uh, seeing it, uh, you know, this coming weekend. All right, so everybody, it's so nice to have you as part of the live stream. The way this works, as always, we got ourselves a good old fashioned live stream today. Three stories. The way it works is that uh, we'll go through the three stories. You can ask me anything that you would like about that, you know, keep it specific to the story we're discussing. Try to wait till I answer it, open it for questions. We'll do that. That's a good idea for a poll, Jules. Uh, try to, you know, uh, keep it to the sub subject matter. But then at the very end, you can ask me, uh, you can ask me anything that you would like in the final 10 minutes. Although, um, maybe I'll do the Q&A before the uh, succession part. We'll do like a limited Q&A. Uh, so that, um, you know, you, uh, you can still ask me anything that you want, but you won't have to get succession spoilers. Uh, okay, everybody. So let's, with, without further ado, let's dive in. All right. First story of the day. Boop. Kim Kardashian. Actress. Fascinating, fascinating. Uh, it, oh, I'm sure it's a little bit of a stunt casting as well. Uh, stunt casting situation, but I think there's, you know, a lot of creative and business sense behind it. So let's break it down. Hey, Will. So it was announced this morning on Kim Kardashian's social media accounts, which of course have plenty of followers, that she is going to co-star in American Horror Story 12. They're on their 12th season. And that her co-star will be longtime American Horror Story favorite, Emma Roberts, and it's called Delicate. Uh, now, the first thing I thought was, oh, taking a page out of Lady Gaga's playbook, are we? Uh, Lady Gaga, of course, was some stunt casting way back in the day. Jo Joello says, hope you're doing great, Grace. Finally was able to catch you on a live. Yay, I was thinking Kim is going to take the Ariana Grande route, where she's only there for two episodes or so. Well, that could be true. They're calling her a co-star, but it could be a misdirect. Uh, and I think, you know, that, that maybe could, could work, maybe. So Lady Gaga, of course, I think was the first really big stunt casting on that show way back in 2015, right after she did a little cameo in Sin City 2. And I have to say, I think Lady Gaga has proven to be a pretty good actress. She did two seasons of American Horror Story. Then she went on to do A Star is Born in 2018, uh, House of Gucci in 2021, and then Joker 2 in 2024. That's consistently three years between each project. I think that's a clever thing to do. Lady Gaga's got a lot on her plate. She's doing other stuff, and I think she doesn't want to, you know, a lot of talent we see overexposing themselves these days, and I think Lady Gaga is being careful not to do that. Uh, word in the trades is that this is based on uh, the book Delicate Condition, which is said to be a feminist take on Rosemary's Baby, and there indeed is baby music in the teaser. That's interesting that, Marduk, you say she couldn't act on SNL because the trades are also reporting that Ryan Murphy saw her on Saturday Night Live and said, I think I can work with her uh, and has been talking to her ever since. Now, let's talk about the viewership situation here. Uh, Mika, Don't Worry Darling is also an interesting comparison because, of course, with Harry Styles, although that ended up not working out in anybody's favor. It was bad for the movie. It was bad for Harry Styles. And Harry Styles' acting career is pretty much over. So yeah, they're on their 12th season. You got to do something to get people excited about it and want to tune back in. So I think that's important. 
Also, the Kardashians has famously moved from E! to Hulu, and uh, American Horror Story airs on FX, which is part of all the same company. FX and Hulu are now all owned by Disney, so this is some great brand synergy. Uh, also, I wouldn't be surprised if they do some behind-the-scenes filming for the, uh, for the Kardashians show. So the Kardashians show will promote American Horror Story. And I think so. It's really good business synergy. Now, of course, the question is, can she act? I'll, I'll be curious. I'll ask you guys. I'll ask you our first poll. Um, what do you think? What do you think of Kim Kardashian on American Horror Story 12? And you can say, I'm excited. I'm excited. She'll be great. Gonna be awful. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, no, she's horrible. No, no, she's she's not good for the show. Not good for show. No, she's not good for the show. And then I don't watch American Horror Story. <laughs> All right, so there are your four your four choices there. So Lady Gaga, as I said, turned out to be a great actress. She also, of course, had already proven herself in that ca in cameos, her music videos. Uh, but, you know, Kim Kardashian, of course, already does appear on a reality show and has some experience with having to at least entertain an audience. And she's been doing that for quite some time herself. And also, you would think, you know, this is a show that's professionally made. They, I'm sure, will write to fit with what Kim Kardashian can and cannot do. They're not going to want to embarrass her or the show. So and also, how far will they push Kim Kardashian? Well, she have really graphic scenes, right? You know, in terms of a horror sensibility. Uh, will she have like a big murder sequence? I mean, that you know, you could have something very interesting there. And you could also wonder what does Kath? Uh, what does I almost KK is also Kathleen Kennedy. What does Kim Kardashian get out, out of all this? Well, I think it's very important for her to stay fresh and relevant. So this is just, you know, Kim Kardashian, what's she up to now? Ah, oh, she's crazy, but like in a good way. Her whole thing, Kim Kardashian's whole directive is to generate conversation. And this certainly does it. She's been trending. So I think, you know, that's a big deal. It's like, it's, it's better than messing up Marilyn Monroe's dress, right? Borrowing it and ripping it. Uh, and then, as I said, I think there's probably, as just Josh also said, content for her show. Oh, she's nervous to audition. Oh, she's on the phone with Ryan Murphy. Oh, she's going to set. She's having a costume fitting. I mean, she's got to keep her show entertaining as well. There's just tons and tons and tons of content suddenly for her show. What do her siblings think of her being on American Horror Story? It's uh, They can talk about it, all that stuff. They got all of that. All of it, all of it, all of it. So, I don't, I mean, as someone who, I tried to watch the very first uh, American Horror Story, and I was like, it's too weird and scary for me, and I turned it off. I didn't even get, I didn't even see them get into the house. I think the first scene was like Adam Levine and him and somebody else outside a scary house, and I was like, too scary, and I turned it off. So, I mean, I've watched Ryan Murphy's other shows, but I've never been an American Horror Story fan, but I know that it is a significant fan base. So, the fact that it's still going is a testament to Ryan Murphy as a producer. I mean, that's amazing. 12 seasons. 12 seasons. All right, let me close the poll and we'll go on to the next story. Let's see here. Well, before we close the poll, does anyone have any other questions about this? George Alexander says, I would love it if Kim would be playing the head of an elite cult. Give us a mix of Rosemary's Baby and Stepford Wives Club. Oh, that would be interesting. She has to be careful, though, not to have too harsh of a commentary on her own life. <laughs> Uh, Jared says, I'm an American Horror Story super fan, not to toot my own horn. That's okay, Jared. You, who's going to toot your own horn but you? Toot, toot away. But I'm glad to hear you're optimistic. Look at Tyler trying to fast forward us. Brian says, I've always wanted to see Brittany on American Horror Story. Ah, uh, poor Brittany. I think, I feel bad for her. I think she's pretty clearly having a relapse. Oh, look, Ross wants to get back into it. Oh, people are into it. People are into it. Uh... Patrick Durling says, is there anyone Ryan could cast to get you to watch, Grace? No, I'm afraid not. I don't even watch because I, I love Evan Peters. It's just too creepy and it's just too much for me. It's just not for me. Uh, all right, so let me close this poll and see how you all voted. 43% uh, of you don't watch American Horror Story, but 27% of you think it's going to be so bad, 
but you can't wait. That's awesome. See, I think that that's the factor they're going for. And I think if Kim Kardashian is willing to have some fun and laugh at herself, it will go very, it, that's the best recipe for success. Uh, and then 15% of you think she's going to ruin the show, which is not good. And then 12% just think that it's going to be all around awesome and you think she will deliver. So that's pretty good. Oh, Mika, I do love me some Matthew Reese. I don't know if anyone ever saw that interview he did recently. He's just so different in real life. It's, it fascinates me even more. Oh, Theo says Lana Del Rey for American Horror Story. That's actually a very good idea. But I feel like that's more of the same. I feel this is a really good idea, quite frankly. I think it's a good idea. If I were, uh, I mean, I don't watch it, but I, if I were an executive that was asked about this on anyone's team, I'd be like, let's do it. Uh, all right, so that's the first story of the day. Hold on, second story of the day. One second, let me boop it. Oh, I booped already. We're already booped. All right, boop. So the Warner Brothers Discovery merger. This story broke late last week, but I was covering uh, Star Wars. Instead, uh, the sun is hitting my hair the wrong way. It's driving me crazy. I apologize. Uh, so anyway, the Warner Brothers Discovery merger uh, was challenged late last week. And so some of you asked me for my thoughts on it, and I have some pretty interesting thoughts. So that's why I brought the story back, even though it's a few days uh, past its breaking date. I like that. It's breaking date. Uh, also, I wanted to let you know, in case you didn't see my tweet earlier today, Wednesday is a big day for Warner Brothers Discovery. They are at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. on the Pacific Coast, going to announce their new streaming plans and what they're going to do with HBO Max. Oh, I'm ready for it. I told you this a, like a year ago what they were what they were up to almost almost a year ago. And uh, I'm excited for it to finally, uh, you know, uh, you know, I told you I play the long game. So that's going to all be announced on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do plan to cover it, either in a live or a video. Let's see exactly what it entails. I think for breaking stories, I like to do the live uh, because you guys want to talk about it right away. Uh, but anyway, also, I think this is interesting because, you know, HBO is, I think, has so far won the streaming wars. It had seemed like it was old-fashioned streaming, you know, considering how popular uh, Netflix had become and then Disney Plus came in there. But I think that HBO... Stay, stayed the course with Sunday 9 p.m. drops, and they are just at the peak of their game again. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. Just wait, we're going to talk about succession. I mean, everybody, Sunday nights at 9 o'clock, I think a large chunk of people at this point are consistently watching uh, HBO Max at 9 p.m. It has become appointment television in an era where it's very hard to do appointment television, and that's really impressive. So I think the HBO brand is, is better than ever. So, but it's getting a track, it's, it's getting attacked left and right. So we'll see what Zazie does to it on Wednesday. But then also, uh, about a year later after the merger was approved, and at that time, 30 members of Congress did write an open letter to the Justice Department in December of 2021 saying they felt this was a bad idea. But Zazie and John Stanky, that's the guy from AT&T on the right there, went ahead with the deal anyway. And it was approved by the Justice Department. And uh, they both made a ton of money. They both made millions and millions of dollars off of it. And John Stanky and AT&T are still involved because they are now shareholders of Warner Brothers Discovery. That's why I told you, I mean, it's widely believed within the industry that they just bought the, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. I think Zazie played with the idea of being uh, a Hollywood titan, but it didn't go so well. So now his job is to get this company into shape so that probably Comcast, NBC, Universal can purchase it. And the earliest that can start to happen is 2024. And in that deal, John Stanky and AT&T and Zazie and all the shareholders of Warner Brothers Discovery would make a substantial amount of money. Uh, that, to me, seems more suspect than the merger. There, I feel maybe Congress could get them, that the merger was done under false pretenses, and it was only done to make this money at the expense of a number of people's jobs, both within the company and as hires creatively. So, but that's not what's going on right now. Uh, four Democrats uh, have gone back to the Department of Justice and said, we want you, we urge you to take a second look at this approval and say that it was the wrong thing to do and that you made a mistake in approving it and to rescind your approval and insist that the companies break up. Uh, two of the people spearheading this are Elizabeth Warren, former Democratic presidential candidate, as you might recall. She and Bernie Sanders are on the more extreme spectrum of the Democratic Party. She is a senator from Massachusetts. And as you can see, she's very closely aligned with Joaquin Castro, 
who is a, from the House of Representatives, who's a Democrat, in, um, in, t- in Texas. So they're arguing that the two, that the two companies merged, Warner Brothers Discovery, is hurting jobs, hurting the job situation, and also is uh, limiting the content that is available to the consumer. Now, content, there's a lot of content. I think many would argue there is too much content out there right now. Uh, and I think that that's, you know, I, so I think that's an odd argument. I think that you could argue the type of content that's being rescinded is a problem. I think that it seems to be, right now, the content that's been pulled off of HBO Max, particularly at the beginning, seem to be, um, you know, very much representative content. They seem to be targeting that in particular. That's not good. Uh, and then also, I think you could argue, you know, you're hurting people with, in terms of their residuals. You know, HBO, uh, I mean, Warner Brothers Discovery pulled a lot of this content so they wouldn't have to pay residuals to the creators, which is, you know, money that you have to pay as long as it's airing. Uh, and people, as we've recently been discussing, live off of that money. Now, to me, that all makes more sense than what they're arguing, because why don't they say anything about when Disney and Fox banded together, when they merged? Why aren't they challenging that merger? What about Amazon and MGM? What about all the mergers going on? There are a lot of mergers in the tech space, the video game space. So much stuff has been going on. Why are they challenging this merger? Now, I haven't heard this anywhere, but this is my suspicion. I suspect it all boils down to CNN, which Zazzy and the person he hired to take it over um, are shifting to be more conservative. Uh, And they're doing it very slowly, but they are taking it out of, you know, it was like, I would say CNN up until now has been the most neutral of the news networks. Fox, of course, is extremely conservative. MSNBC is very liberal. And then CNN slanted a little bit liberal, but it tried to be in the middle. Uh, But I think that, um, you know, that would be a huge loss to the Democratic Party if CNN were to go more to the to the to the conservative side. So, uh, you know, I think that that is something that they're probably very worried about. Uh, I I know B. Weeb says that they think that Warner Brothers is just an easier target. What's an easier target than Disney right now? Why? I mean, I think that Warner, you know, they're under fire from a lot of people. Uh, They're a very popular target. I think that, you know. I think that CNN is a, is a, we'll see what happens, but that's my suspicion. But we'll see if this happens. You know, they've reached out to the Justice Department and the Justice Department has really not said anything. Uh, but I don't think they're going to, I think once the merger is done, it's done. I don't think that it's going to be able to change anything. Uh, but that's what's going on. And Wednesday is going to be a very big day for uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. And we're going to see what they do with HBO. What they, you know, HBO Max and then Discovery Plus. Uh, Discovery Plus is sticking around, but I think that content, as I told you before, will be, I think HBO Max will become unrecognizable. But let's see. They have amazing content. It would be very hard to kill, um, to, be, to be able to kill, uh, uh, you know, HBO. Uh, all right, so that's the second story of the day. Now, before we get to succession discussion, let's do the Q&A. All right, so I'll put a note down below too so people know if they're watching after the fact. But we're going to do five minutes of the Q&A before we get to the succession discussion. And while we do this, uh, we'll, uh, I'll do the poll for succession. Who's your favorite? Well, there's so many characters. We'll do which, who's your favorite? We'll do the main of the kids. Who's your favorite Roy Child? All right, so Connor, Kendall, Shiv. My favorite character is Tom, by the way. Shiv and Roman. There you go. Uh, April says, protect Casey Bloys at all costs. As long as no one messes the traditional HBO portion, everything will be okay. I think so. Let's see how much they're going to charge you for it. Welm says, I wouldn't exactly call Disney an easy target. That's a good point. Let's just say a popular target. Disney has, uh, dis- has proven that they're willing to fight back, which is, uh, I think, great. M. Fall says, Grace, thank you for your support to Charles, who spoke about self-harm recently on a live. I've experienced this, and your response was incredible. Uh, it was my pleasure. You know, uh, I'm glad that we were able to be there for, for him, and I've had other people reach out to me p- since then, and I, I, think it's, I think asking for help is one of the bravest things that you can do. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think all we can do is be as compassionate as possible. 
Uh, Truzen, good luck. You got a lot of succession to make up on, but I think it's worth it. Jake Van Norton says, how do you feel Monica will explain her powers in the Marvels? What do you want to see from her? I told you that, you know, they really increased, you know, uh, Nia DaCosta really wanted to increase the action sequences for Monica Rambeau in the Marvels movie. And in fact, I heard, you know, this is before a number of reshoots have been done. Uh, so I'm not sure what the current sta sta status of the movie is, but I know that action sequences were taken away from Captain Marvel and given to Monica Rambeau, I think, you know, at the very least to, to secure an even playing field, which I think is important. The movie is called The Marvels, not Captain Marvel 2. The Brendan V says, if uh, I'm all for if that means that Warner Brothers is to get swallowed by Universal. We need more competition out there. Yeah, and I'm sad to see these really historic movie studios fade away. Fox, now Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers is nowhere near what it once was, which is uh, unfortunate. Bubbles said, do you think that they should still keep majors in the Loki season two trailer? I saw an earlier tweet that you posted. Yes, I heard as of the last edit that he was still in it. I think that they should, if they are thinking of keeping him at all, or if they've decided to keep him, but even if they're, even if it's still in play, he should be in that trailer. He was already in the end credit tease at the end of Quantum Mania. Uh, and I feel that, um, it would get people talking about the wrong thing. Although, let's see how much Jonathan Major hijacks the conversation. I hope not. I hope, I hope not. I mean, I don't know what's going on with Jonathan Majors. I don't know if he's guilty or not. And I think it puts all of us and the show in a difficult position. Because right now, you don't know who you're cheering for, potentially. Al Watch says, will you do a Mrs. Maisel review? I don't know. You know, I know that some of these shows do very well on trending, but there isn't really a YouTube audience for it. So that's why the... The live stream kind of acts as like a good way to discuss it. So at the very least, I can maybe try to do uh, a discussion like this when we have the very final episode of Mrs. Maisel uh, in a, just a few weeks now. Future movie actresses have been watching Succession, but yeah, I accidentally found out what happened last night, and it's pretty freaking big. Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about it in just a few minutes. Rented the first three John Wick movies on Prime to catch up before seeing four. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, have a good time with that. And somebody wrote me and said they walked out before John Wick 4 ended, and I felt bad because the second half is the better part of the movie. Let's see here. Oh, Armin, you're cancer-free? I'm so happy for you. Armin, I don't always recall everybody's usernames. Are you the person who sent me a photo of you at chemo on Twitter? I'm very happy for you. Regardless, congratulations. Keith, I did see that The Bad Batch was getting one more season, season three, and I'm very excited about that. I can't wait. It's a great show. Oh, that was you. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Ar Armin. That's wonderful. That was such a nice picture of you. You looked so nice. Uh, HC2, so what are your thoughts on a Harry Potter reboot? I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I think that uh, it's going to really upset people, and I think it just kind of makes people wonder, are the previous actors just that against J.K. Rowling at this point? Oh, The Dark Savior, you rewatched The Little Mermaid? We're going to watch it next month. Uh, and we've decided the votes have come in. We will be voting, we, we will be watching Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom as our watch along on Friday, April 21st. Is that a Friday? Yeah, Friday, April 21st. It's going to be great. Oh, B. Weeb, I'm so glad you're enjoying The Bad Batch. It's an excellent show. Let's see here. Josh, Josh says, people were pretty toxic over the video game. Are you talking about Super Mario? Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. I just think it got ridiculously political. And that's, you know, that is what it is. That's just that space, unfortunately. Josh says, I got my ruby. Just wanted to say thank you, Grace, for all the great content and for, ca uh, for creating the BTT fam. I love watching your content, and today it helped me make my, take my mind off the stresses of life. Oh, that's fantastic. That's the best I could ask for. Let's see here. Patrick says, do I need to watch anything before jumping into the Bad Batch? You do not. You don't. Just jump on into season one. I think you'll be fine. Oh, Amparo, you're going to love the Indiana Joneses. Don't watch Crystal Skull, though. Just skip it. It's not good enough to watch, and it's just going to make you not like the series as much. 
Polk says, can't HBO just become bigger and be in charge of all live television for the service? I don't know if they could maintain their quality. And then also, you don't want everything to be like HBO. You want to have different flavors to have a really successful streaming service. That's one thing I think that holds back Disney to a degree. Let's see here. John Thrasher says, is the Marvel's a billion dollar movie? I don't know. I don't know if Marvel... Let's see. I think the next billion dollar movie is probably Secret Wars. I don't really know if they have one before that. But let's see. Danny says, do you think that Margot Robbie doesn't care about Harley because she has Barbie now? No, I don't think so. I think she cares. She worked very hard on Harley Quinn. Um, and I think, you know, she doesn't know how Barbie's going to work out, quite frankly. Um, but so I don't think that's the case. Oh, is it George's birthday? Happy birthday, George. That's very sweet of you, Kayla. Welm says, do you think a Harry Potter animated series would be a better idea? I think it would give even more breathing room for the story and they avoid the recast problem. Uh, well, no, then who would do the voices? I'm not quite sure how to expand Harry Potter content, to be honest with you, but I don't think this is it. Jules, HBO is really excellent. They have incredible content. M. Fole says, Disney Plus needs their own Casey Boys. Well, the problem is, is that that's because they've split up into different divisions where, you know, they have someone doing the Marvel content, the Star Wars content, the Disney Plus content. Oh, Adrian, you can stick around for my succession review if you don't watch the show. No problem. Uh, let's see here. Arun says, hey, Grace, any news on the ethnic background of the Land Kingdom? They just cast an actress's color as the queen. What is the Land Kingdom? I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. I'm sorry to say. Ah, you've been away. Well, happy one month, Jake. Ivan says, does the Super Mario movie success would they release a Nintendo Cinematic Universe and overtake superheroes? Um, it seems to be my impression that the movie played very much for very small children and their parents, and then there was some nostalgia factor. I thought it was interesting that as the week pr weekend progressed, more and more people were like, yeah, the movie's not very good, which I thought was uh, funny. Um, so I, I mean, I don't, I think there's money to be made there, but I, I would, if I was Universal, I would ask Nintendo what they wanted to do, to be honest with you. I think Nintendo clearly understands their fan base better than I think, because it's such a different fan base than the way Hollywood operates. There's very little crossover. So I think that I would not want to oversaturate it. I think that especially if they're going to do stuff that is not story based, like the whole reason that Marvel was so successful is that they created a story, a story, keyword story that interconnected between all these movies and then television shows. And it was, you felt you had to catch every chapter. Uh, that's not what Mario is at all. So uh, I don't think that they could build a Nintendo cinematic universe just off of this movie. But, you know, there are other games. A lot of you were mentioning Zelda, which seems more story-based to me. So maybe Zelda could work. Uh, but, you know, I think the fantasy space is also a little crowded right now. So I think that would be my first thing that I would do. I would sit down with the Nintendo people and I would say, what, do you, what would you recommend? Because I, I think Universal can't drive this train. They just can't drive this train. Or Mario Kart. Let's see here. Stephen says, did you see Daniel Radcliffe has been using his platform to speak on issues facing the trans community and being a good ally? That's wonderful. Good for him. Daniel Radcliffe is a very nice, kind individual. Let's see here. Talon says, Grace, loved your movie math this week. The blood's in the water for the mouse, and I'm worried they won't recover for a while. I don't understand why people think that the success of Super Mario is something that's a problem for Disney. Um, you know, it was very close between Frozen and Super Mario in terms of the opening. Super Mario did out, did outpace Frozen 2, but it was still close. Uh, it's not over. It's been one weekend. I think a lot of people are calling a, a situation before they see the final numbers for Super Mario. Uh, we don't even know if it's going to definitely be a billion dollar picture. We haven't even seen the second weekend hold. Um... You know, I think when you have a movie aimed at extremely small children, I don't know if they're going to go to the theaters again. That sounds to me like you had a great time seeing it once in the theater. You're going to go and watch it now at home when it becomes available. But, you know, again, this is new territory that we're in. This is a fan base that we in the movie space and the entertainments, you know, movies and TV, we don't know how they act. So it's hard to predict their movements. So we're going to have to just take it step by step. 
But I really don't think that it's a problem for Disney. I think Disney is having some issues, but I don't think that Super Mario is going to replace them. I think it's just like Marvel and DC. The ideal situation is that they all do well and that we have numerous successful space, uh, franchises in the space because entertainment needs to have... It's a big machine that needs new content to constantly be coming out. And, you know, Disney has a lot, but they can't do every weekend. That's right, Haunted Autumn. Crystal Skull did replace the phrase, jump the shark with nuke the fridge, because it was that ridiculous. Hey, Sonia, Sonia. Marvelous Jax says, hi, Grace. Thoughts on Thunderbolts reducing Elena Belova's scenes to the, in the Black, to make it, because it was a Black Widow sequel. Yeah, I said I thought it was a Black Widow sequel, and that is indeed what it ended up being. Um, I would be, if I were Marvel, I'd be more nervous that beef seems to be a little bit more niche than perhaps anticipated, and I would worry maybe about how that was going to translate to this upcoming project. I don't have a problem with reducing Yelena Belova's scenes to make it more of a team film. You know, team, T-E-A-M. I don't want, I'm not saying teen. I think the team aspect is fine. But I, I, I do have some concern about her not being the leader of the team and instead it being Bucky. I mean, she is in the forefront of that illustration. If they were going to be co-leaders, I would be fine with that. But um, I, I just hope they do it well. And I also think that having uh, Ali Wong there is really bad. She's the only person in beef that's now left out. And I think she should at least have some kind of extended cameo. Just something to get her on the red carpet for when it premieres. Oh, Nikki, I'm so glad you enjoyed beef. MJC says, Grace, did you see the Peter Pan and Wendy full trailer? Yeah, I saw that this morning. It debuted. Uh, I felt that it looked like there was no point to it. You know? Uh, no, Owl Watch, I don't have any presidential tea. That's funny. Uh, I, I just feel like... Um, I just feel like I don't understand why it was made, to be honest with you. It doesn't seem particularly exciting. It doesn't seem particularly lavish. I don't feel they've particularly added anything new to the story. Um, and I don't like the, the, the muted color palette that they have for the, for the land and just everything. And I've seen Peter Pan at this point. It's in the public domain, so I've just seen so, much, so many versions of it at this point that it's really hard for it to be fresh. That's right, Mika. No wedding cake treatment. This is a, a mud ball, you know, like, you know, it's not even real food. Uh, and, you know, I think the wedding cake treatment is crucial to the success of these live action remakes. All right, I'll do like three more questions and then we'll move on to succession. Rodolfo, I'm glad you eat enough wedding cake that you can love it. That's great. Oh, thank you, Justin Davis. That's very kind of you. Oh, Arun says, my question was about the Little Mermaid. The Queen of the Land Kingdom is an actress of color. Let's see how it works out. Again, I think that instead of doing something organically, it seems more like they're doing something to be diverse. And I want this to succeed very badly. And I'm nervous that they are putting up too many obstacles for themselves to overcome. I'm very nervous about the Little Mermaid. I think the Little Mermaid and the Marvels are going to have such a difficult time. And I will say, you know, with the Super Mario situation that I had, I got a little taste of what it's like to be on that, and in that situation. And it's very bad. It's, it's really toxic. And, you know, of course, Twitter doesn't do anything about it anymore. Jay King says, this channel is such a constant source of joy and laughter. I can't thank you enough. Ah, oh, my pleasure, Jay King. What a nice thing to say. Wade Chadwick says, what is the wedding cake treatment? Well, you know how a wedding cake is extremely lavish and has all this ornate details and it goes over the top almost, you know? It's just, it's not just a decorated cake, it's a decorated cake. Well, that's what a wedding cake is. And that's what, you know, in terms of the production design, uh, that's what people want for a, a live action animated adaptation, for it just to really go over the top and have intricate detail work on uh, doing that. And Danny, you're right. The Little Mermaid doesn't have wedding cake quality either. I think partially because of the VFX issue. I think sometimes it does. Sometimes it has wedding cake qualities. Um, but I think like the underwater sequences don't have them enough. It, you know, it would be a soggy cake maybe, but that's okay. They can make it work. All right, so let's move on to succession. All right, so that's the end of our Q&A. All right, boom, baby. Succession time. Oh my gosh. Let's like a look at the poll. Shiv won. I'm so happy. That's wonderful. I just like seeing the representation for women. 
Uh, Mexican Eight Nacho says, I'm so glad we're having a succession discussion. How will HBO balance its embarrassment of riches for the next awards season? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, White Lotus has to, well, White Lotus won't have a, a season by then. But yeah, it was funny. I saw a great tweet last night where everyone was like, you know, and you know, Connor was like, maybe we should cancel the wedding. People use that line for how all the competing shows are going to feel about their Emmy campaigns. They're like, why should we even bother? Uh, so who's your favorite child in the Roy family? 33% went for Shiv. Oh, look, it's pretty evenly divided. That is really great writing. Isn't that great? Connor threw it off with 13%. There's Connor, although he does a very nice job. Uh, but that's hilarious. 20, you know, that's really funny. I think of that group, I personally like Roman the best out of the kids. Uh, that's where I would throw my vote. Uh, all right, so let me talk about this. And then when I'm done talking about my thoughts on the show, we, I'll ask you if you have any questions for me, okay? And we can discuss it a little bit. So last night, Succession had one of the greatest episodes of TV ever. And, you know, I had always felt that Succession, a show about business, had trouble competing with the more high, you know, um, high concept shows like Dragons and Game of Thrones and uh, Infected, aka Zombies, uh, so to speak, and The Last of Us. How is a show about business meetings going to possibly compete? But with Logan Roy dying last night, he died, and I didn't know, I don't think anybody knew that he was going to die and didn't leak, which was incredible. That was, they had an episode that was on par with the, with like, with, with Succession, a show about business, a business managed to be at the level of The Last of Us and House of the Dragon, and I would say The Sopranos. I thought he was faking his death too, Danny. Um, it was Easter. I was actually at my, uh, my parents' house because it was Easter, and our evening was running late, and we were gonna, pl we had planned to watch uh, an Easter uh, themed movie, but we were like, oh no, uh, it's too late. Uh, we decided we wanted to, to dye eggs instead because it was a group activity. And then we would watch Succession. And thank goodness that we did, because I think if you don't watch it live, and I'm sorry if you didn't, you're going to miss a little bit of what the experience was like. Uh, and I actually turned to my, uh, to my mom while we were watching it, and I was like, you don't really think that they're going to kill Logan Roy, do you, this early in the season? Because we all know it's the final season, but I, I had not at all felt that they were going to kill him. And I think that really mimicked what it was like for the characters who were like, he's not really dead, is he? You know, like that, that disbelief because something happened just so, so, it was just so realistic. So what this actually reminded me of was Tony Soprano. I'm sorry if you didn't watch The Sopranos, but it's been out now for over a decade, so I can talk about The Sopranos. So The Sopranos also has a really amazing series finale. Oh, thank you, Americo. That's very kind of you to, to, to gift that membership. But the very end of The Sopranos, uh, and it's a very, it was a very controversial decision creatively, it just cut to black. And the reasoning was, they never explained it, but based on earlier conversations in the show and in that very season, the idea was, was that Tony Soprano had been shot and the show ended because his life was over. And that's what it was like. It was just done. And that really, I only watched The Sopranos for the very first time during the pandemic. It's an incredible show. It's as good as everybody says. Uh, holds up. Uh, and it actually started. HBO's journey to being prestige television. Hey, Shelly Lee, thank you again for gifting some memberships again. That's so kind of you. It's nice to see you there. Uh, and it was, you know, so it's fitting, I think, that it's kind of similar in that regard. So Tony Soprano was a very realistic depiction of death from the person's perspective. It was just over. Never, he never saw it coming, and he just died. Uh, here, though, Logan Roy was a very realistic uh, depiction of a loved, one, a loved one's death, someone in your circle, someone you know. Maybe not even a loved one, just, but just someone that you know. And we all came to know Logan Roy over these like a little over three seasons. He was a tremendous character, a wonderful character that really captured our imaginations. He was bigger than life. So to see him have a, to die when you're like, he can't die, he's too big of a kid. You know, Logan Roy would never die and he died. And you're just like, I mean, I think it also is very scary because it underscores that, you know, death comes for everyone, even Logan Roy, which is like really depressing. So anyway, uh, he didn't die on camera, which I think also added to the shock of it. Uh, they didn't even have a tease. You know, often on a show, they'll give you a little wink and a nod to set it up. You know, Logan Roy says, I don't feel so good. Or, you know, they have some weird framing and someone points at the screen and says, oh, he's going to die. You know, and everyone goes, oh, there he goes. But here, 
They, in fact, did a wonderful job with the misdirect. He was feeling good. He was on the top. He was at the top of his game. He was healthier. He just had a birthday, although poignantly, he had asked his bodyguard slash friend uh, if he believed in life after death, which is just so incredible when you think about that he just died a few weeks later. And he had asked that very question. So, uh, and then also so much was happening. He was skipping out on his son's wedding to go try and work on this deal to make it go through. Roman, he would brought his youngest son, Roman, back over to his side. You know, things maybe seemed like they were going his way. You know, he was wheeling and dealing. And then he just died. And also the fact that the news came from Tom, who very often makes stuff up or isn't very truthful, you know, he's all over the place, um, made it seem even more surreal. And then there were no leaks. There were no leaks, which I think just underscores how important it is to not have so many spoilers these days. I mean, this is what it's supposed to be like. I mean, what an amazing, uh, I mean, it was almost in the LA Times and then Vulture, but the LA Times did it first, so it was more clever. The LA Times actually ran an obituary for Logan Roy last night. And it was like he actually died, like he was a real character, a real, not a real person. And he, we all witnessed it. We were all there. We were all there and saw him die. I don't know if he was on, on the potty. I know some of you think that he might have been on the potty like Elvis or Tywin Lannister. I think he just was in the bathroom. You know, he excused himself because he wasn't feeling well and he died. Uh, you know, but we don't even know all the, all, all the details because we, you know, we were in the place of his children who got the call from Tom who was on the plane. And they were both, by the way, stuck on different modes of transportation. Uh, Logan Roy was on a plane and the kids were on a boat for Connor's wedding. And as people were pointing out, it's another wedding episode on uh, HBO, just like the Red Wedding. Uh, but then also, I thought there was a bit of karma in there. Uh, I don't know, for those of you who are familiar with the New York area, where Connor's wedding boat was uh, parked, okay, was actually, I'd say maybe 15, 15 minutes tops by ambulance from NYU Medical Center. So if Logan Roy had gone to his son's wedding, he would have been not in the air, he would, and he would have been very close to a hospital. And maybe he would have lived if he had not skipped out on his son's wedding to go and try and work on a deal. So that, to me, I mean, they didn't talk about that. I think, you know, it works for the show to kill Logan Roy now, quite frankly. But uh, that's what I thought of. I was like, maybe, you know, he should have gone. He should have gone to his son's wedding. Maybe he'd still be alive. Uh, so it was just, it was just, you know, it, you know what was really interesting about it? We're just, you know, we didn't see the death. We weren't there. So often it's about the death scene. There really was no death scene. They weren't even sure he was dead for like 20 minutes. They were doing chest compressions. And you were like, he's at least brain dead. Uh, and you're just never going to see Logan, Logan Roy again. He just kind of disappeared. And that's very much what death is like, particularly in the modern era. And that is like extremely scary. You know, I just, so it was just so poignant and incredible. And so because it was also done in real time, we very much felt like we were witnessing it ourselves. Uh, and as I said, especially if you watched it the evening that it dropped, when it dropped or close to that, you felt like you were experiencing that for real. Uh, and then there were little things that made it also realistic. Shiv, as many people pointed out, Tom kept calling her and she didn't want to talk to him because they're in the middle of a divorce, maybe. Uh, but she kept blocking his call, ignoring it. And I, he, I was like, who's he calling? Because they were doing it so quickly. At first, I didn't even see who was calling her. And I was like, what does Tom want? You know, almost the way Shiv said it to herself. What do you want, Tom? And if she had only picked up the phone, she would have probably made, been able to speak to her father before he died. Uh, as it is, she was the second to last to find out. Uh, and they didn't even realize. That's funny, I'll watch. Find a Lazarus pit. Do it. A DC crossover. Um... I think Logan Roy would want that. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, she probably would have gotten to talk to her father and would have been the first to know. So that's a, I think there were a lot of little small life lessons. That's one of the things I like about stories so much. And some of you are like, what does it matter if Super Mario Brothers has a story or not? Well, I feel that this is what we get out of stories. You're able to get so much life experience without having to actually go through it yourself. Pick up your phone, you know, uh, see what's going on. Uh, go to the wedding. Maybe you shouldn't skip your son's wedding, right? Maybe the last conversation you have with your father at the karaoke bar last episode shouldn't be so hateful because you never know how it's going to go. Uh, so I think these are little things for you to remember. But that was great. The shiv in the cell phone. 
I thought Kendall not being able to say he couldn't forgive. He, and I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was, and I saw some people talk about that. Kendall doesn't have to forgive his father. His father was abusive to him. But I think that Kendall still said he loved his dad. And he was like, I, I love you, but I, I can't forgive you. But I do love you. And I think, you know, when I was first watching it, you're like, why do you got to bring that up now, Kendall? Why you got to bring it up now? But I thought about it and I was like, it's so well written because I think that Kendall wanted to say, I forgive you. And he's, he was trying to make his brain say it because he's like, oh, his dad's dying, telling you love him, telling you, for, tell you, you forgive him. But he just, his heart was like, I can't do it. And so he said it. He switched what he was going to say. Instead of saying, I, I forgive you, so I can't forgive you, but he still made it clear that he loved him. And I thought that was really gorgeous and really beautiful. That's right. <laughs> Kendall did kill somebody, and his father covered it up. Uh, and I thought it was interesting that Roman uh, really still had, oh, thank you, 80s model, for gifting a, a membership. Uh, Roman still had allegiance to his father more than anyone else. Uh, I think also he couldn't accept it. Uh, J. King, I agree. I think the way Kendall phrased it was perfect. He says, I can't forgive you, but it's okay, and I love you. Oh, you're making me cry. That, I think that was beautiful. I think that was an honest thing. That's right, M. Fole. M. Fole agrees. It was just incredible. It was really, really incredible. You know, it was, I thought it was just so good. It was amazing. Uh, Tom's jokes, you know, Tom being like, you know, Tom's in a very bad spot. He's divorcing and his only real connection to the family. And Logan was protecting him because he offered to go to jail for him. And he backstabbed all the kids to get on Logan's good side. But now the Logan's dead. What's he going to do? So he's in real trouble. Uh, and then Connor also had some amazing lines where he said he never got a chance to make him, uh, to make his father proud of him. And then also his, his bride admitted that she was only marrying him for his money. At least she's honest, I guess. I mean, I have to say, I agree with Roman that I don't think Connor's going to do any better than Willa. I, I mean, I think he could, uh, I think there was a better match out there for Connor, but I don't think Connor would be interested in somebody else. So I'd be like, you know, it works for you, Connor. I mean, at least you guys have your eyes open on it. Whatever, man. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with you guys too much. You're a little too weird. Uh, so anyway, I thought it was beautiful that despite everything they had been through, they still loved their dad. I thought that was really beautiful that they still loved their father. And that was very sad, too. Then the chips were down. The love was there. Oh, Emily, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's very sad, Emily. I hope that this episode wasn't too tough for you. Uh, but yeah, so that was incredible. Now, now they're also, I think, at least for this one episode, really stepped up to the plate. I thought Shiv in particular did a wonderful job with that statement. Um, Big League Chew said, brilliant episode, Jerry almost getting fired. Yeah, you know, I have to tell you, if I was, when I was watching and I was like, I think Roman should run down to Jerry and say, hey, we, I never fired you. Because <laughs> they're the only ones who actually discussed it. He should say, we never had that conversation. I need you to get back up here and help me keep the company. That's what I would have said if I were Roman, because she's pretty upset with him, understandably. But that's what he should have done. He should have been like, it wasn't my idea. My dad made me do it. But guess what? He just died. Let's work together on this. That's what he should have done. Uh, but now instead, he's just created an enemy. And I think it was pretty horrible of his father to ask him to do that, to ask him to fire Jerry, considering their very odd relationship. Uh, so yeah, so um, I thought they all stepped up, at least for this one episode, although as their father pointed out, they are not serious people. Uh, I think it's very unlikely that any of them will be able to take over, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't really know if any of them, I don't think anybody on this show, I wouldn't be surprised if it does get chopped up for parts like uh, Alexander Skarsgård is threatening to do in the preview for the next coming episodes. Just like what's happened to Warner Brothers and Fox. They both got to the chop, they both went to the chop shop. You know, they both had that same situation. It happens. And I think it would be very realistic if that's what happened to Waystar, quite frankly. Uh, so anyway, the show, this is what's interesting about it. The show is called Succession. And so Logan Roy made it very clear that he was never going to succeed. He was never going to let somebody else take over for him. So he had to die. But then what's also fascinating about it is that he had no plan of succession in place. Like when I was watching this last night with my parents, my dad was like, well, clearly he has the whole thing set up for who's going to take over. And my mom and I are like, no, that's the whole point. It's going to be a real SHIT show. 
because he has no plan because he thought he was going to live forever and this is just a real problem <laughs> it's really bad and even though it is a family they do have the added wrinkle of the stock market and share prices and keeping control of the company and their whole wealth wrapped up in this situation and i thought it was actually fascinating when kendall said we could have the plain circle so this doesn't get out until after the stock exchange closes. But if it is revealed that we had the plain circle with our dead dad on it, it's going to look really bad for us in the press and with any investigation. And I thought that, that was like, it was cold, but it was true. You know, watching the show, I was also surprised that not one of these children has a lawyer. Not one of them has a lawyer representing them to watch out for them. I find that very unrealistic. Like Kendall was saying a lot of things that a lawyer should be saying for him. And here's the thing. It's not that Kendall doesn't have to think of them, but that's the whole point of having a lawyer so that you never said it. You go whisper to your lawyer what you want the lawyer to say, and then the lawyer is paid to go and say it, and then you go, oh, he's a real son of a bitch, but that's why I pay him. <laughs> and it is you all along. It's what I told you about Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby was a real hard guy but he had an agent do it all for him. He had told his agent to be mean and he got to walk around being like, hey, I'm crazy, what are you gonna do? Agents, what are you gonna do? And um, so I, I just thought that was fascinating. But it was weird to me that uh, none of them had uh, a lawyer to do this for them. But I thought that was great. So there's seven episodes to go. That's how much of season four is left. And thank goodness, Barry, now I understand why Barry season four, it's also its final season, isn't starting until this coming weekend. Because who would wanted to watch Barry after this, right? It was very cleverly done. And actually, it ended up being a great Easter episode, to be honest with you. So we have seven episodes left to figure out who is going to run this company. And I also think, what will these children become now that they're no longer in their father's shadow? And so many of them insisted that he was holding them back, but now they no longer have that excuse. Or I think in some ways safety net. They have no one left to advise them. Um, it's just a very interesting situation. And I think they have a lot of space to really do a good job exploring it. I mean, the show is called Succession. It has to end with someone succeeding Logan Roy. So that's what we're gonna find out now. Uh, I think that, I guess if anyone, it would be Shiv maybe, but I think, I think Shiv has proven, I don't really know if she has what it takes either to run the company, to be honest with you. I don't think any of them do. Kate says, hey Grace, I remember in a previous live stream you said you didn't want Logan to die this season. How do you feel seeing that it happened? Um, I thought, Kate, it was so well done um, that I have to respect it, even if I felt it was, I was very dark and depressing. I did not enjoy being put through that. And I didn't even have to act it out. I felt very, you know, the, the afterwards thing, talking about their process was very interesting. Uh, Dallin says, I have not watched Succession, but you guys are making me want to watch it. That's great, Dallin. I think even though you know what happens, I think you would still enjoy it because there are a lot of really uh, surprising things. Alex Tejeda says, as someone that does not have the best relationship with my, my father, this episode was tough to watch. I'm sorry that that is the case for you, Alex. All of the Roy's reactions made me emotional. Yeah, I thought the complexity of it was really, really beautifully well done. And the fact that it the fact that it rings true to you, Alex, I think is a testament to the writing. I hope, I hope, um, and you know, maybe you can't repair things with your father, as you know, Kendall was showing, but I, that doesn't mean there isn't love there. Uh, Maggie says, quite possibly, a uh, Margie, Margie, oh, that's a nice photo, Margie, quite possibly the best series ever. It really is up there. As I tweeted last night, I felt that it got to, um, the Godfather level of quality. When they were getting off the boat and walking to the helicopter, helicopter on the helipad, I was like, this is the Godfather. This is how good this is. Godfather one and two. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Sanaa Lathan. She was Kendall's lawyer and she was a good one. That's right, Caitlin, time for them to sink or swim. Margie, they do have lawyers, but I never see any of them. Uh, Courtney says, I think Roman's gonna struggle probably because he thinks he's killed. Yeah, he wrote, he left him a very bad message because he lost his temper, which is sad. Um, yeah, Courtney, I think he's going to really struggle with that. And he has no one to talk to because now he's alienated Jerry. But that wasn't exactly a healthy relationship anyway. Yeah, Hugo, when Shiv called him daddy and, you know, you were like, oh, my God, she does love him. Why couldn't she have said something the other night? I mean, he really, when he went to that karaoke bar, they should have realized how serious the situation was. Um, I think they should have listened to that. Uh, and, and they should have been nicer. 
Uh, Mika says Connor will win the nomination, yes or no. You know, I got to tell you, it would be fascinating if Logan Roy was the most beneficial to Connor, and he actually did become a strong candidate. He's such an idiot, though. Although I liked when he laughed when he was like, why do you want me to drop out for the good of the country? And then he laughed, and I was like, this is such a good show. Uh, Issa Faye says he essentially died alone without his family. That's right, you know? And that's the other thing, because, they, you know, I loved it, though, when they tried to paint the kids as estranged in the statement, and Connor said, and then Kendall said, that is an, uh, that is, uh, an inaccurate statement. And I, I forgot the wording they used exactly, but it was beautiful. I thought that was, I was like, wow, Kendall, way to step up to the plate. Well, let's see here. Mexican Nacho says, the writing is amazing, but the acting is just so good. Yeah, I think it's going to be, you know, Lloyd, I don't know if it's going to sweep the Emmys because it's still pretty early. We don't know what's coming down the pipeline, but I think it's going to be, I think that, I think that Jeremy Strong and um, Sarah Snook, who play Kendall and Shiv, have been waiting for their turn, you know, because Tom won last uh, year. Uh, I think that they deserve some recognition. It was very sad that he died, Isa, alone without his family. It is really tough. I'll watch this. Greg started off at an amusement park in the beginning. I remember you mentioned a CEO just started off as a guy in the Jungle Cruise. That's right. You think Greg will succeed? That would be hilarious, I'll watch. I don't know if he has the experience, but, you know, that would be funny. Uh, Mika, the Greglets line was funny. I have lots of little Greglets. Oh, Antonio, we got you back into succession? Oh, yay. That's fantastic. Fantastic. It would be crazy if Tom succeeded, Julius. Although I thought it was funny when they had the scenes for next coming up when they were talking about Tom's position at the company. <laughs> They're like, no one likes you. I was like, wow. So any other questions about succession? It's about time for me to sign off so I can get to the screening. Oh, SMR Goose, you thought of me? Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, I was very sad. I was just shocked. I think, you know, it was delayed, just like uh, Roman, too, because I was like, um, I just couldn't believe that it was true for a long part of the episode. Mandy C. says, I wonder if Rupert Murdoch is watching. I'm not sure. You know, I'm sure it's surreal for him. Oh, my pleasure, Jules. Jen, I'll go back and find your super chat. Hold on. I'm sorry. I missed it. Uh, Caitlin says, time to sink or swim. J. King says, I saw someone say from now on, Easter should be a holiday to celebrate this episode. <laughs> it was very good. Let's see here. Margie M says, quite possibly the best series ever. I read those. Wow. Where is your comment? Let's see here. How did I miss this? I'm going back. Where did it go? Oh, that's right, Cam Creative. Even if he hadn't been at the hospital, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have, he would at least have died with his family. That's a great comment. Heather says, the reaction to Logan's death was realistic. A writer had, has had this happen. It reminded me of my reaction to my own father's death. Oh, I experienced that disbelief thunderclap upon my notification. Oh, Heather, I'm so sorry for your loss. I think that's like I think it hit a lot of people as very realistic. Where is your comment here? KM Creative says, until I saw him on the ground, I did not believe it. I agree. Oh, America, thank you for the gifted membership. I didn't agree, I didn't quite believe it either until I saw his face. Even with his stomach, I was like, he's okay down there, right? I'm surprised none of them asked to FaceTime. I guess none of them had an iPhone. I was like, FaceTime me, FaceTime me. I agree, Caitlin. Amazing episode. Your comment's not showing up, Jen. Uh, could you please leave it again, and I will look for it. Jen, would you please, uh, YouTube has gone back on it. I can't find it. Um, would you please just write it again, and I'll answer it right now. Bye, Terry. Jen, it's way too far back. you got to just write it now, and I will... Um, I'm sorry that you have to rewrite it, but I'm just going to just be paying attention until you write it. They did announce the trailer for the Marvels tomorrow. Thank goodness. Yes, it's tomorrow. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, Jules. I thought when his bodyguard was there, it was sad. It was a little like Tom. You know, not only did he miss him, but, you know, he's worrying what's going to happen to him. Okay, so Jen says, I was saying that Succession reminds me of the Dallas TV series. <clears throat> and that would be cool if they took the Dallas opening and combined it with the Succession cast. Oh, that would be funny. Yes, that's funny. It's, it's, uh, Dallas is a little bit more soap opery, but yeah. And Dallas, is, of course, is one of those really iconic series that everybody was watching together. Oh, thanks, art lover. Mika says, Connor and Willa didn't get the wedding they planned for, but maybe the wedding they earned. Intimate with none of the Roys. Logan's death might give him the surge for the sympathy. 2%, here he comes. That's funny, Mika. I think he was right to get married. You know, I think he did it perfectly. I think he got very private ceremony. Because when's he going to get married? He's in the middle of running for president. Then he's going to have to deal with his father's funeral. Then the whole thing about the company. It would be too long. And I think that if he wanted to make sure he married Willa, he should just do it right there. Oh, hey, Ryan. Happy Monday to you, too. All right, so uh, I'm going to get going. I had a lovely time talking to all of you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I don't know if there will be a stream tomorrow because, you know, we have the Marvels trailer. Let's see. Uh, but I will be reacting and breaking down to it. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. It was great seeing you. Uh, and my Renfield trailer will, uh, review will be going up sometime this week before it uh, opens. Okay, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.